this is Dick Knotts. Uh, welcome to Dick's Pizza Clinic. Today we're going to be making some pizza dough. We're going to do something that will give you a little uh, fun thing to do around the house uh, while we're all cooped up here with the coronavirus scare going on. And you want to have something uh, really special for, for dinner. How about let's make our own pizza that way we can have our own pizza toppings we can customize everything we've got and uh, we're going to show you how to do pizza crust that will uh, hold a lot of toppings this is New York style pizza crust this is out of Peter Reinhardt's uh, book called American Pie and uh, Peter is uh, from Charlotte, North Carolina. He's at Johnson and Wales University, and he is the uh, American authority on pizza. So I'm just playing with a little dough here that I've made up ahead of time. I'm going to set that aside for a minute now while we make our own dough. I'll just uh, cover that up with a little towel here. Keep that in good shape. And we're going to make the pizza right on the bench top, right on, right on the tabletop. So what I'm going to do is uh, take my flour mix, put that right on the uh, table. I'm going to make a little well in the center. All the ingredient list uh, will be published, and I thank Cammie Roberts for helping me to uh, publish this video. So we're going to take our flour, then we're going to add our sugar and salt and dry yeast. This is uh, instant yeast, bread machine yeast. Uh, if you use active dry yeast, you'll need to add, oh, another eighth of a teaspoon. Uh, instant yeast works a little quicker, a little faster than the uh, active dry yeast. Now the yeast that I'm using, this is a Fleischmann's instant yeast for a bread machine. Uh, it's the way it's uh, the way it's sold. Not too many people are using that old bread machine anymore. But uh, this is instant yeast. It mixes right into the flour. It does not have to proof in water first. And it's very handy. Uh, it comes both in the jar like this, if you're going to do a lot of yeast roll baking, yeast breads, uh, or you can buy it in the foil packs, so you only have about two and a quarter teaspoons in each little pack. This is only a half a teaspoon of yeast, so you don't use a whole foil pack if you have the foil packs. You have to measure it out. And uh, so we're going to just mix those dry ingredients around and a little bit of that flour and then make our well again in the middle and in the middle of that well we're going to put our teaspoon of olive oil and we've got two-thirds of a cup of water. I'm just going to put part of the water in here to start with because this is likely to get a little little messy at first but we don't mind. We're going to use our hands we're going to just flip a little flour in there and we're going to just stir it around with a couple fingers for a second while we get a little flour incorporated into that water. Start to get ourselves a little dough mix going here. Gradually just we're going to add a little water, I mean a little uh, flour to it. And then as we go along we'll add a little more water as well just to uh, get the entire amount of water in there finally. So we just keep pulling the flour and the water together. Keep mixing around. And we get this shaggy little mess started in the middle. So I'll put all the water in now. And let's start flipping a little flour in there. Stir it around. Don't worry if the water starts to get loose on the side like that. Just kind of corral everything into the middle. And eventually we're going to get it all together. And we're going to look first for just a shaggy mass here. That's what we call this when we 
get this started. We're not going to get into a whole lot of complicated baking science here, but basically we're making bread. That's what we're doing. Pizza dough is just a flat bread. And uh, so if you can make pizza dough, you can make a loaf of bread. Or you can make a dozen rolls. Whatever yeast formula you might have, this is the way you're basically going to start it. And this is called uh, just a straight dough method where you put everything together and start mixing. You don't have to make up a little pre-ferment to start with or a sponge some people would call that. This is all just flour, water, salt, yeast, olive oil a little sugar to give that yeast something to work on a little more than what's in the flour. Now you see just as I, I keep adding that flour in now I'm going to start to kind of knead this a little bit just fold it over and press on it, fold it over and press on it. Keep adding everything together until finally it picks up all this flour off the bench. So we just start kneading a little more and see how I just have a little bit more to go now. So I'm going to use my little plastic bench scraper, dough scraper to help me uh, corral everything. So, get this all mixed together. Now, the formula that I'm using, I had to reduce because it makes the, the original formula that I'm working from makes four pizza doughs. So I'm basically just going to make one pizza dough that would be about a 14 inch crust maybe. And uh, just for a demonstration thing. And it's uh, much easier to to handle. Now, you see that I've, I've got everything into a, a little dough ball now, but this is kind of a, just a uh, rough dough, and in order to get this into a nice pizza dough, we're going to have to knead it. So, we're going to flatten it out a little bit, fold it over on itself, and push it down. Fold it over, push it down. Fold it over, turn it, push it down. We just keep doing that and doing that and doing that. We're going to do that for about five to eight minutes. And I'm going to stop the video while I'm doing this because you don't need to watch me do this for eight minutes. So my trusty assistant will come over and turn the video off and then we'll, we'll pick it up in a few minutes. And we'll have a nice soft fluffy velvety dough in the meantime. And while we're while we're doing this, if the dough doesn't feel a little moist, so it feels kind of cool to the touch, it's not really sticky, but it, you can tell it's moist, that's what we're looking for. If it doesn't feel that way, then we either need to add a little water, or if it's feeling real sticky, it's just stuck all over your hands, then we need to add a little flour to it as we go along. Right now, this one just feels just fine. It's not sticking to the bench top, and it's not stick into my hands other than what little bit got stuck there in the first place. So we're going to stop the video now and we'll pick it up in just a minute. See you in a second. Let's start it this way. Okay, we get our dough mixed together. We've kneaded it just a little bit. Then we're going to just let it rest on the bench top, cover it up with a bowl, let it rest here for five minutes. That's just to let the water hydrate all the flour. Once the uh, hydration has taken place, we're just going to imagine now that we're five minutes later. So after five minutes, we're going to take the bowl off. Then we're going to knead the dough for two to three minutes just to get a nice velvety, supple dough. And you can see right here, if I poke my finger in it, it springs back. That's what we're looking for. We want to get it just a little smoother than this, but it doesn't have to uh, knead for a long time like you would for a bread dough. Bread dough would make knead for eight to ten minutes, and this one we're just going to go about two or three minutes, and we've got we've got a nice springy soft dough, and if you really want to 
test it. You take a serrated knife and just cut a little piece of it. And you can see on the surface of it that it's got little holes all through it. That's where you've been incorporating air as you've been kneading it. That's a good thing. Now, so we take this little piece of dough and we just stretch it gently. Turn it around, stretch it, stretch it, stretch it. And we're going to do what we call the window pane test. We're going to get it thin enough that we can kind of see through it in the middle. And then take your finger and just poke it and your finger doesn't poke through. We form a nice gluten web in there that is going to be able to help us trap all the CO2 that's going to be created when the dough ferments or proofs. We're letting that yeast work on it. The yeast breaks down the sugars, forms CO2 and alcohol. The alcohol goes away. The CO2 gets trapped in little gluten bubbles that are like little balloons inside the dough. And that's what gives it the good support and makes it strong enough to hold up all those toppings we're going to put on it later on. So, we're going to let that uh, just sit on the countertop now for about 15 minutes. Then we're going to put it in a plastic bag with a little bit of olive oil inside the bag and uh, put it in the refrigerator uh, overnight. Uh, if you want to use the dough right away, then you, you can use it the same day. It's much better if you let it sit overnight. The fermentation takes place. You're developing lots of flavors in the dough that aren't going to be there if you use it right away. So that's what we're going to stop for now. And then we'll pick it up later on when we have our uh, actual dough that I've got under my... Here we are. So we're back to now where we're going to be using the dough. And the easiest thing to do, this dough doesn't even require much flour on my hands, but I'm just going to let the dough stretch by itself as I'm letting it just drape over my knuckles. And I gently turn it and stretch it so we can get that form that we want. And there's our pizza dough. So all we got to do now is go around the edge and where the edge is a little heavy, we can pull some of that back in toward the middle. It's going to be thin in a couple of places, but that's all right. It'll be fine. So the dough will be basically ready to use in that form. We'll set our other dough aside. So when we get, you can use a rolling pin and roll it out. If you do, you're going to be, of course, pressing all the air out of it. All that CO2, you're going to, bubbles that are in there, you're going to be pressing out. The dough will not have those nice holes in it when you, when you cut it. It's going to be much more like a uh, loaf of bread would look with just little tiny holes in it. If you do the hand stretching, then the dough will have much more of the uh, open texture with all those holes in it and it'll bubble along the edges probably and that's all you need to do. So that's how you make the dough and we'll come back another time and talk about how to dress it up and get it ready to make a real treat in the oven for you. Hi everybody, we're back and we've got ourselves a pizza dough, our pizza crust that we uh, had made and uh, I have no idea what Jan's trying to tell me here but Okay, we've got our pizza crust. We're going to go ahead and make up a pizza. And uh, so the first thing we need to do is get this back off of here, where we had it in the refrigerator. Uh, anytime you have to wait a while, 
for your crust. You made it in the middle of the afternoon, you want to wait until supper time, just put it on something flat, a little flour on it, cover it, and put it in the refrigerator. So now what we're going to do is uh, transfer this to a pizza peel. If you don't have a pizza peel, then uh, you can use a flat cookie sheet. And uh, on the pizza peel, we're either going to put flour. I like to use semolina flour. Uh, it's a little bit like putting cornmeal on the peel, which a lot of people do. However, the cornmeal will burn in the oven. The uh, semolina flour doesn't burn as readily. So we get our, underneath our pizza crust, just hold it on the back of your hands like that and put it right on the peel or the cookie sheet, whatever you have. And uh, spread it out just a little bit. Now our toppings, uh, you can look on the internet and find any pizza sauce uh, recipe that you want. A very simple one is just to take diced tomato, a little tomato sauce, some basil, uh, a little red wine vinegar, um, garlic. If you're not putting garlic in the pizza toppings, you can put garlic in the sauce. So we have our we have our tomato sauce here. This is not a cooked sauce. It's in a pan just because we crunched up the uh, diced tomatoes with a potato masher. So we're going to put that uh, sauce on the pizza. So we're going to spread that sauce around as much or as little as you like, your preference. I don't put a whole lot of sauce on the pizza, but especially because this uh, sauce is a little on the wet side. So you don't want to, you don't want your pizza to be too wet. Okay. Now I've sauteed up a little bit of uh, onion and mushroom uh, and uh, kind of caramelized the uh, onion a little bit. So we can spread some of that around. Pizza toppings, you know, if you're a, a meat person, you do the meat thing. Uh, if you're a veggie person, you can go wild with veggies all over the place. Uh, we really enjoy the uh, sautéed onions and mushrooms thing. And we're going to go a little bit on the, on the Greek side with this one and use um, marinated artichoke hearts and also uh, Kalamata olives. So we've got our artichoke hearts chopped up here a little bit. Spread those around. And then our Kalamata olives. Sprinkle those around so we get those well distributed. And then cheese. Now again, cheese, you can do any kind of cheese you happen to have in the house. Uh, and that's what we're doing tonight because we're in the COVID thing. So uh, we're not running off to the store to get all the best pizza cheeses that we can find. But we've got some mozzarella. We've got a little sharp cheese. We've got some ricotta cheese, which I think I'll put on first here with, uh, we're just going to put some dollops. Take a, take a teaspoon and just put a dollop of, of this uh, ricotta around in a few spots. Just like that. And that gets a, a nice uh, creamy texture. And that's always nice to have um, a little contrast with the uh, mozzarella and the uh, sharp cheese, which you're going to 
bake up and uh, get a little on the crispy side. So we'll put our uh, mozzarella around. And then I'm going to finish with the uh, little bit of this sharp cheddar. And that's a uh, that's definitely not Greek, but you go with what you got. And that's what we like. So that is ready to slide into the oven. And usually I just give it a little jiggle to, to see that it's actually going to move on the peel. So I know when I go in the oven, it's going to slide off. Uh, I've preheated my oven to uh, 550 degrees. And And I've, in the oven, I have a pizza stone. The pizza stone that I use is six tiles from Lowe's Home Improvement. I put those on one of the uh, oven grates and uh, let those preheat in the oven for about an hour at uh, 550 degrees, and then I'm ready to bake. Okay, you can touch it off. When, is, when the is, oven's preheated. Is that, is that off? Uh, okay, we're going to put the pizza in the oven now. So I know I, my pizza is moving on the uh, peel or the cookie sheet, whatever you have. So we're going to go over to the oven now, preheated. It's ready to go. It's very hot. So be careful. And we just slide that right off onto the stone. And it's ready to go. And pretty soon, probably my smoke alarm is going to go off, but that we can deal with that. All right, so it's going to be in a 550 degree oven for eight to ten minutes, probably. It just depends on the pizza. You want to lift it up a little bit, look underneath, make sure the bottom of the crust is nice and brown. The edges are going to get brown and crispy. They may even get a little charred. That's okay. We don't mind that. So, be back to you in about ten minutes. Okay, so it's been about uh, eight to ten minutes. We're going to look at the uh, pizza in the oven. When you open the door, be very careful. There's going to be steam and very hot. Okay, so we have a very brown pizza. And underneath, we've got some nice, got some nice brown spots. So we are ready to bring that pizza out. So we're going to go back with our uh, pizza peel and Bring that, bring that out, turn the oven off, and we'll slide that right off on our uh, pizza pan. And then uh, what I'm going to do is uh, just sprinkle a little bit of uh, olive oil. just to give a little, nice little fresh flavor. So, with your uh, pizza cutter, we're, we're gonna cut it just like they do at the store, and we'll be ready to eat. We're, we're gonna let this one set just a little bit, but there's your pizza. So you can see, nice puffy crust. Now this crust sat around a lot of the day, so it's a little puffier probably than it would be ordinarily, but that is your New York style pizza, and uh, no matter how your first attempt uh, comes out, just remember that the next attempt will probably be a lot better, okay? So we'll see you again next time on uh, whatever new clinic we come up with for baking in St. Albans Church. Bye now.